Hi there, this is Being Proper with Lisa Skye. I've got my proper hat on, it's time to be proper. To my left is Matt. Hi there, Matt. Hello. Feeling proper? So proper. Great. And to my right is Erin. Hi there, Erin. Hi. Proper? Never. Mm. So, let's talk about metamors. What's... <laughs> what is a metamor, Papa Lisa? I am glad you asked Matt. Mm. <laughs> uh, Erin, would you like to explain? Okay, so in polyamory, where people have multiple partners, mm -hmm. the metamor has become the common term for the person who is the partner of your partner that you're not in a relationship with. Oh! So if I'm with Susan, mm -hmm. and so Susan and I are girlfriends, yeah. and my husband's name is Tom, mm -hmm. and Susan's wife's name is Betty, my Sh metamor is Betty, uh -huh. Tom's metamor is Betty. Mm-hmm. Ah. Wow. That's incredible. So it's the people involved with your partners whom you have no involvement, like no, no relationship. I involved. see, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I love that you said romantic and I said no relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, how does that sort of influence the dynamic of the relationship? Does them having a, a label help? in any way or is it it does it, active? it does because it feels less awkward than saying like oh my boyfriend's girlfriend uh. sure for and years it, my partners used uh, boyfriend in law like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but metamore's better that's that's really great though yeah well um i mean it depends on the relationship too i mean mm -hmm. uh you know my primary partner uh would prefer not to have relationships with my people because they've got enough mates mate they're an introvert of course um <clears throat> But, you know, the fact that I've been with a few of them for three or four years mm. means that, you know, they're inevitably going to... Cross over. Yeah. Possibly. And um, also I'm lucky because my secondary partner has the best primary partner and she's amazing. Ah. And, um, and yeah, so, so but it's, it's still kind of fraught because it's like, you know, we go out for a coffee just mm -hmm. to kind of do that. Mm -hmm. um, well, first, it's do we do that? Mm. You know, do we have a relationship? And I think... It tends to be that you kind of have to if you're having if they if become it's very a, serious. A long term relationship, yeah. you're mm. gonna have <clears throat> some kind of crossover because mm. the only way to avoid it is tremendous acrobatics. Yeah. Mm. Like yeah. And would you want to avoid it? I I would suspect it's Some people do. Some mm. people like to avoid it. There's I mean, you've got the whole regiment of the don't ask, don't tell poly uh, people, mm -hmm. um, which I'm the complete opposite of. <laughs> I, I prefer, I'm like, good, you're dating me, we're family now. <laughs> like, <laughs> you come, you have dinner, family dinner uh, with all my partners, that's sort of my thing, so. <laughs> I'm kind of in the middle of that, I yeah. think. Like I have partners who just want to exist in a vacuum mm. um, for mm. you know various excellent reasons. Mm. Um, Goodness, I have partners who are almost closeted about it. Again, for and very... the closet does add extra, yeah, like complications. Mm. And it's for very good reasons as well. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I know there's an OK Cupid question that says, "Would you date someone in a relationship?" And there's an answer that says, "Yes, even in secret." And uh. some people take that to mean, you know, like you and I are dating, mm -hmm. but you're also dating Erin, and I'm your mm. mistress. Sure. But it's not. It could yeah. be that Erin knows all about it, mm. but you're mm. a primary school teacher in an extremely mm. conservative area, mm. and you're not quite ready to disclose. Mm. Or it's mm. a very new thing, or you're new to kink. Um, mm. You know, I have a submissive who, when they were new to kink, of course they didn't want to disclose. Mm. Sure, um, of course. So it's, you know, like, oh, yeah, this married woman beats me up every so often when she gets the itch, and then we don't talk for a while. Sure. It's weird. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I find it kind of depends on, yeah. depends on that. Yeah, and I find the seriousness level of the relationship, or even the length of the relationship, even if it's like, I hate seriousness is the word because, mm. you know, all, relationships are all different. They're not, it's not a hierarchy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, I find, I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> um, uh, right, um, even if you have a very casual relationship, if you've been together for like five years, yeah. It, you know, eventually you just sort of become part of each other's sort of social ecosystem. That's actually exactly what happened with yeah, a relationship of yeah. mine that's gone for about four and a half years now. Mm. Uh, it just, you know, sure, we only see each other every couple of months or every couple of weeks, but meow. 
But this is the, the interesting thing. Yeah, if, see, if my birthday's first, it's awesome because they can set the pace. <laughs> but then again, you don't want them to feel awkward, like, do I buy them a birthday present? If mm. so, how much? Like, do I just get them a card? That's even more heartfelt. Do I get yep. them a box of chocolates? Do I get them a really thought out handmade present or a $50 something? Mm. To me, $50 is a lot of money. $50 <laughs> is a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> a pineapple! <laughs> Having said that, we're all in the arts industry, so, yeah. 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 <laughs> if you've got $50... Uh, send it to... Please just, send it to us. Yeah, Any go of on. Us. <laughs> One day, my segments won't just degenerate to me begging for money. <laughs> Today is not the day, friends, at the Lisa Sky on Twitter. Um, so, Erin, how do you negotiate, uh, I guess, gift giving amongst metamors? Um, well, mostly it's very easy because we're all really poor. Like, I'm on Centrelink and a lot of my partners and my partner's partners have been on Centrelink. So it's usually less presents and not really an issue in the first place because no one can afford it. But presents and are gestures as well. Like, I prefer, mm, yes, I've, so, got enough, I've got enough stuff. Like, if, if someone buys me a present, what I want is either something I've said, I really want that, or um, experiences. I'm mm, a big experience mm, junkie. Take mm. me out for dinner, oh, make yeah. me dinner, make me a card. Yeah. yeah. For me, the, 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 I guess the similar thing is more like birthday parties. Is it appropriate oh. to invite someone to a birthday party? Yeah. You know, and again, I think it's always different. I mean, look, with polyamory, just the same as everything in polyamory, the easiest thing to do is just ask. Mm. Just go, mm. oh, you know, should I get Susan something for her birthday? Or, you know, am I welcome at Susan's birthday party? And you don't even need to ask Susan. You can ask your, you know, the, the yeah. person in between mm. what they think. But also, yeah. I guess, asking your primary, like, may I invite this yeah. person? And sometimes it might be easier for your primary to have this person and their partner yes, rather than definitely. just this person. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, polyamory is basically a relationship masterclass. It's certainly not for everyone, and it's a lot of talking. And so, so much Google Calendar. Have you, have you learnt from uh, experiences you've done in a way that you would do differently? I'm trying not to say mistake. Um, <laughs> That's a tricky question. I don't, mm. I don't actually feel like I've made any mistakes. And I don't mean that in a braggy way. I just feel like even if something didn't work out the way I expected it to, it was still okay. Mm. I haven't really had any disasters, thankfully. I would guess, um, though, it's more about the idea that as people, if you're fundamentally good, decent people, you're going to have a lot less problems, mm, mm. no matter what relationship you're in. So you both are pretty good people, in my opinion. So, like, well, because stop. I'm half Greek, I have like the wog gift giving thing. Of course. Mm. And I made a mistake in that I was way too generous with a metamor in that just because they were awesome. And I was, I was working at the time, so I had money. And so I was just like, here, have treats. And then they felt that that set the pace, which was awful because mm. I didn't expect like very generous, time intensive things from them. Mm. Um, and I guess it's similarly now, you know, I'm always like, I like you and I liked that we had dinner together. We will do it again one day. I am very busy. You know what it reminds me of actually mm. is in-laws because yeah. I had that issue with my partner's in-laws where they went very fast on the gift giving and the, you know, and they were like, oh, we got mm. Aaron something for his birthday. And I'm like, Thanks. You know, I don't really want to. But thank you. Um, and now I am kind of expected to give them things and Oish. be involved in family things. Ugh. And uh, Ugh, family. That's something we can all agree about. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, thank you for watching. This has been Being Proper for Bent TV. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Erin. Thank, thank you. you. Hi, and welcome to Between the Sheets with me, Dean Arcuri. Joining me under the covers is the fabulous Michael Wheeland. And the lovely Kirsty Wilbeck. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. We've got a big, important issue to talk about today. Very important. I'm very excited for this one. It's, it's very political. It's very exciting. Is it time for Pauline to bite the bullet and just eat a halal snack pack? Yes. What do you reckon? Yeah, <laughs> yes. because delicious. So, well, segment can't be over. We've still got time to talk. <laughs> segment over, guys. We're done. Let's all go home. <laughs> Absolutely. Like it's, I mean, That's they right. are very young, but don't you think it's mm. interesting that we have important um, racial conversations wrapped up in kebabs? 
you know? It's crucial. Crucial. Very crucial. Crucial conversations wrapped up in kebabs. Absolutely. Yeah. I wonder if she would have a problem eating it if it was a non-halal snack pack. Is it the food itself? No, it's the halal. <laughs> it's the it's halal. The halal. It's the halal. But it's also delicious. Um, I just, I just think it's interesting that we've got these issues being wrapped down into so many small little things nowadays. It's a bit of an oversimplification, isn't it? Oh, like... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not known for my depth, let's be honest. <laughs> oh, no, 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 not you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying that you're oversimplifying it. Shady. But, Paul... <laughs> but Pauline Hanson. Yeah. But, yeah, that it's the root of all evil in society at the moment in Pretty Australia. Pretty much. Like, that She's like is Voldemort, what the issue but ginger. Is. Yeah. <laughs> Well, to her, the root of all evil is halal snack packs. Yeah. And I think if you spoke to any random punter on Smith Street at 12.30 on a Sunday morning... 11.30, 1.30, <laughs> 2, even 10.30. Pro yeah, probably even midday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because the reality is it's not a thing. It's an no. Thing. It's not a thing. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it is a shame that these conversations have turned, gone left and right and aren't focusing on the really important stuff. Like, I, I feel like we can't have a fun, intelligent conversation about you know, racial issues, but we can about a kebab. We can about a kebab. Yeah, sure. Which is quite it's, all, it's all coated in kebab deliciousness. I mean, a, a kebab is... All right, so what's your favourite serving of kebab that you like? I'm a falafel. You're a falafel? Mm, I do like a good falafel kebab. Mm. I'm a vegetarian, so that's... The falafel? The, fala the falafel's my only option. But it's amazing. Well, it's a great option. Mine, mm. I, I don't get it all wrapped in, in something. I just get the meat straight up as it is, and I get chilli sauce, and I get garlic sauce, and then I get chips as well, not mm. with chicken salt. Nothing drives me more crazy than why? chicken salt. Yeah, why? Normal salt should be enough. But then I put okay. it all in a bowl <laughs> and mix not. it all together. It and should then be, eat it. it's not. It is. I never understand the chicken saltness. But okay, it's let's let's look at ra racial issues being mm. focused on in relation to, you know, food. Mm -hmm. um, it does, it, does anyone else feel a little bit worried that everything's turned into, you know, a quick 140 character comment now? Or, you know, you can't get in depth in relation to these conversations and in relation to this stuff anymore, I feel. Yeah, and uh, all you have to do is look at the um, Sonia Kruger comments to, to see that you, it's it's very difficult to have these conversations, especially in a public space. As or we try a, to have one. As we that, try to have one right now. Um, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not saying she went about it the right way or that her opinions were valid, but um, it doesn't mean that the conversation shouldn't be had. It's oh, about having absolutely. them in a, in a respectful way with a little bit of lighthearted comedy thrown in. Oh, well, I, I, I'm all about the face-to-face conversations as well. Mm. And I mean, you just summarised mm. it right then when you were talking about uh, uh, having these conversations in 140 character li limits. Like, yeah. that in itself just shows how uh, social media focused we are these days mm. and uh, how we, we try and have these conversations on Facebook or on Twitter and, and we've moved further away from actually engaging with each other face to face and, and talking to people when they bring points up that we don't necessarily agree with. Yeah. Or, yeah, it's like it, the keyboard warrior sort of generation, you know? And it worries me. You can find an article to agree with any point of view you need in relation to what you're saying on the internet at Absolutely. any given time, but it doesn't mean that anyone is particularly right. I mean, it, it, but it does mean that we're not getting, you know, are we really getting our messages across? Are we really communicating what we need? It makes for an interesting spin on things in relation to, you know, the plebiscite and, and marriage equality Definitely. and stuff like that because you can find positives and negatives in relation to anything that you want and it makes everything a lot harder. It makes everything really difficult. Like, how often do you post something on Facebook, for example, and then people comment underneath it and, and you have a look at the comments and, and you think, where, how where, did get did where is that coming from? Yeah. And then you have a look over your message that you initially put out and you're like, oh, okay, maybe that's what they gleaned from it, even yeah. though... Yeah, whereas if you were face-to-face, -face, mm. you'd be able to just immediately go, oh, no, no, what I meant was this. Yeah. But then it turns into this massive... Everyone brings their own personal experience into what you've written. Exactly. As opposed to it being your words yeah, and your... Exactly. And it's so much easier to mm. pull the reins back in verbally in and a, to just mm. really instantly just go, oh, no, no, I meant this. And yes. then everyone's like, oh, okay, cool, we're on the same page now. Yeah. Yeah. But when it's on Facebook or whatever, then you get other people chiming yeah. in. It's and not the three of us having a chat. Exactly. It's, it's, it's the... the and it's bigger than Ben 700 and other yeah. Yeah. You know, people on, on your friends group or their friends or friends of their friends exactly. that are all, all up in your business. Well, yeah. What can we do about it? 
And burn the internet. Burn the internet. <laughs> Skynet. <laughs> Skynet had it right. I'm sorry. If I could find Shut a building down. that that internet lives in <laughs> and I just go and have some words with that internet, I tell yeah. you, knock yeah. on its door and go, oi. Just unplug it. I've got I something think it's to say. Unplug it. I think it's a good indicator that a lot of those conversations need to be, like we said, not necessarily one on one, but in small groups at the pub, you know, have a pint, have a discuss about certain topics, maybe don't plaster it all over Facebook. Not to, not to say you shouldn't have an opinion on social media and you shouldn't use that as a platform to, you know, to yeah, sure. arguments, A lot of people but... understand social media. I, f I feel like a lot of people don't understand it. Or they think they do and they don't. Yeah. Yeah. My problem with social media is that people need to use Snopes a lot more. What's that? Uh, oh, the yeah. debunking website where people post... For hoaxes? People oh, post yeah. random yeah. stuff like... I do love that people look at this picture and the, sen um, the, the tagline and don't actually read an article. Yeah, yeah. Share it like Whereas some of the articles it. you go into and you click into them and they're actually from The Onion and it says... <laughs> if you've... Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much The Onion. <laughs> yeah, there, <laughs> yeah, pretty there much. There was an article recently that, <clears throat> that proved that theory about people just looking at the picture. And just sharing. And, and just sharing. And, yeah, and then when you went into the article, it actually said exactly that. Like, it, you didn't actually, people read actually these. opened this. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it's it's really interesting because yeah. you see people do that all the time. Yeah, because then you it's read a new article. way of of attaining and sharing information is just to flick a share, just, flick yeah, a share, pass it on, have a like, have a love. Have yeah. a it's all about a handball. Yeah, exactly. so it's like, you've got a yeah. handball less, mm -hmm. have coffees more. Exactly. You know? Definitely. Back to human connection, face to face. Mm -hmm. Well, there's nothing like getting into bed together for a bit of human connection. Nothing like, like it. what we've been doing right here. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for joining me for this very intimate chat that we're sharing with the world. Thank you very much. Well, <laughs> thank you, Dean. By this lovely medium. Thank you for joining me in bed. That's been In Between the Sheets. You're watching Ben TV and this is some more lip service. I am joined tonight by a fantastic panel, Kirsty, Anthony and Matt. Um, and we have one or two problems to help you with. Thanks for sending them in. OK, Sammy, I'm going to have to read this one. It's a little bit, little bit long, this one, just to get into. but. Um, so, uh, Sammy has been dating Leon for a few months. Uh, he's smart, cute, ambitious, caring, a great kisser, and has a fantastic sense of humour. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Sounds good, good so far. far. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'll go tick, tick, tick there. The problem. He gives new meaning to the phrase, got milk. Leon still has the remains of the first gallon of milk he ever purchased when he moved into his apartment. He had overestimated the amount of milk he would consume, and before he knew it, he had a gallon in his fridge, and uh, three weeks passed and it was still in the fridge past its expiration date. Time passed and still it remained there. Soon, it's just six months old, and it's become something of a novelty, this gallon of milk in, in the fridge, six months old and beyond. So Leon has kept his container of milk through uh, two roommates, three um, partners, seven jobs, two refrigerators. It will soon be five years this gallon of milk has been in his fridge. Should Sammy be concerned? Well, my question is, is it there because he's forgotten about it or is it there because it's, he's formed an attachment to it's it? It's a talking point. It's a bit of a, you know, come and see my fucking year old smell it? gallon of milk. <laughs> is it, you know, if it's sealed, then... Mm, I've, I've not actually been to smell the fridge of something. <laughs> <laughs> it's an heirloom now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I... And a science experiment. And a science experiment. I would suggest... Um, just talking about it openly and uh, maybe broaching this, the subject of um, getting the Antiques Roadshow involved and seeing if oh. it's worth anything. Yeah, good one. You, good yeah, one. you could you could take that in a number of directions, couldn't you? How old is your milk? And you could, mm. you know... Yes. It, it could have a How old is your and... milk? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe that was his aim, because he's got us talking about it now. Everyone's yeah. talking about the milk, That's so, right. you know, who knows? I, I don't know. If it was if it was me, I'd throw it out, and you know that could mean kind yeah. of life and death. Well, it could be worth something. Very, yeah, it could be worth something. Or, but the other thing is, how often does this gallon of milk have to be interacted with? Like, if it's just hanging out in the fridge, yeah. well, who's it harming? Yeah. True. Good so Sammy, needs, <laughs> Sammy probably needs to get over himself. Yeah. 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 And embrace, right. embrace the gallon of milk. Right. To, you know, the elephant milk. in the room. Yeah. Talking about the elephant in the room. It's talking about the yeah. five-year-old. Gallon of milk I think that's a non-problem. Non-problem, Sammy. Sorry. Uh -uh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, oh yes, this is from Sonia. 
Sonia's parents want to meet the new girlfriend. Mm -hmm. But Sonia's concerned because she's got several tattoos, wears an ankle bracelet. Hmm. Should she stop the meeting? Is that an ankle bracelet because she's on, you know, like house arrest? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. I think, yeah, that would be my, my question. Yes. Otherwise, tattoos, everybody's it's got tattoos these days. It's a bit random to tell her she's got an ankle bracelet, really, isn't it? It's kind of... Yeah, it's a bit odd, but um, tattoos and an ankle bracelet... Don't worry about the meeting with the parents. Like, you need to leave this woman. She is dangerous. <laughs> Red flags were going on. Oh, tattoos? When will it end? Yeah, several. <laughs> the sky's the limit Not with this just woman. Not but several. <laughs> I think that's another non-problem, unless the ankle bracelet is a, uh, you know, for some violent crime that we yeah. don't know Safety about. Safety reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. She's on some okay. registrar, you reckon? Yeah, that's, yeah. So, viewers, we want you to book up your ideas. These are too many non-problems. <laughs> yeah. Go out and get some real get problems. Get some real problems. Um, OK, oh, yes. Well, Victoria's mm. got one. She has a, a holiday house and her and her apartment... Oh, she doesn't go... sound like she's got a problem. <laughs> it's first world problem, this. <laughs> right, OK. Apparently, Victoria likes to hang out in the early morning naked on the deck. But she's observed the neighbours you know, enjoying the view. Non-problem. Hmm? If you're going to hang out on the deck, then... Should she be, you know, calling the police? Should she... No! no. Get, a big, uh, get a big bush? <laughs> Put in the garden, I mean. We should be more community-minded than, than sort of having uh, to worry about people watching. Let them enjoy, I think. Yeah. yeah. Let yeah. them yeah. enjoy. Yeah. yeah. If they're enjoying themselves, um, what's the problem? Uh, I, yeah, I you're agree. You're looking... With consternation. Oh, I'm, I'm deep in thought about this yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what the look like. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm trying to process it all. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just thinking if, if they're, they're sunbathing and they know that people are watching and they're still happy to carry on sunbathing, then it's, yeah. all, it's just like a reciprocal agreement, yeah. really, isn't it? Everyone's yeah. a winner. Yeah. It's... But Victoria might actually be sort of in, you know, vaguely enjoying the... Attention. The boy, the yeah, I think if you're going to sunbathe the naked, then you, you can't mm. really complain if people are going to look at you. Mm. That's well, kind if, of the point, isn't or it? Or if you're uncomfortable with it you'd, and but you're aware of it, you'd, you'd surely relocate, mm. wouldn't, wouldn't you? Yeah. It's like if you know that your balcony is in plain view of your neighbours mm. who have too much time mm. on their hands and too much money for binoculars, then yes. you'd, uh, yeah, you'd maybe move it outdoors, like out the back. Yeah. Or just put some clothes on. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do you yeah. Put, would you have to put sunscreen on your front bottom? Depends which way you're lying, I guess. <laughs> on your front bottom. That, excuse the uh, scientific lingo. <laughs> I just feel like the children watching. <laughs> For safety reasons, I'd say always sunscreen. Sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. That's my answer. Yeah, That's it should it. be everywhere, shouldn't it? Yeah. Just everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, including the front bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, uh, yes, no, no, this is, this is poor old Nancy. Um, Nancy's invited her girlfriend to move in with her, but she said she'll only move in <laughs> if she fits a power shower. She's feeling a little bit miffed because she's taking, you know, build up a lot of courage to, you know, to approach this subject. But she'll only move in with a power shower? What do you reckon? We're back to Bunnings, aren't we? <laughs> just go to Bunnings. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> what, you think she should just get it fitted and, and solve Well, it? a power shower's always a good thing, partner or no partner. I mean, partner comes, mm. power shower, great, partner leaves. It's a condition still got the power of shower. moving in, Ooh, right. the power shower. I thought the power shower was a metaphor for something. <laughs> oh. Right, OK. <laughs> I'm with you now. <laughs> well, it could be. It could be, I suppose. What could it be a metaphor for? <laughs> That's Anthony's story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, not I'm not touching this one. Well, you're on your own with this one, aren't you? <laughs> Should Nancy be p pissed off? Is uh, the kind of the nugget of this? It well, look, it feels like a, a strange thing to have a hard line about. Like, mm. I'd, I'm trying to imagine if it were me and somebody was like, I'm not moving in with you unless you have a power shower. I'd be like, well, that's a bit much, you know? Yeah. But on the flip side, it's, it's also not that big a deal. Like, off to Bunnings, you trundle. Mm. Like, yeah. Yeah. Pop down there, get the power shower, and then everyone lives happily ever after. So uh, I guess what I'm saying is I'm on the fence. Mm. Right. Mm. <laughs> A very long-winded way of saying <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> First world problems. OK, thank you. We're out of time. Thanks, Kirsty, Anthony thank and Maz. You've been watching Lip Service on Bent TV. We'll see you next time.